Hey guys, David Durang here. Welcome to No Frontier. There's your travel platform. When it comes to all things travel here, it's my job to encourage you to get out there, to create your own experiences and to form your own opinions because I know more exposure leads to expansion. So if you're just now joining me um, and you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning guest, welcome too. My name is David Durang. As I said, this is a travel platform. As a traveling veteran of like 13 years, I was so happy to just have gone to, you know, Egypt and Turkey. These are some of the places that I've been wanting to go to for years. And in this trip, I just made it happen where I went to those two places and I went to Greece. That was about two, three weeks ago now. And so I just wanted to come and share some information with you. Maybe at first I was going to hit you with the Turkey, but um, with, with Egypt, but I'll, I'll give you, I'll share some information about Turkey as well for Egypt, so I've made a video talking and stating how I got scammed. Now, it wasn't a large scam, but a scam nevertheless is sort of like when you go into something thinking one thing and expecting a certain outcome be based on that information, and that's not the case, and it's usually to do with money. And so that's why I called it a scam. But what really happened? So my first morning into Egypt, well, I, I came late at night and I was just looking for food. I'm always on a food mission because that's what gives me my energy. So on all my videos, there'll always be a food mission. Because while you're looking for something to eat, you're filling out the place, you try, you, you're seeing the people. It's just something to do, especially when you get some get to a place so late, you know, a lot of things are closed. You want to get something to eat. You, whether you're long flight, whatever the case may be, you're trying to get something to eat. So there's always a food mission. There's always that motive. So... I, got, I get there very late at night, and then the next day, I got up and uh, I said to myself, wow, why don't I just go to the pyramid now? Because it's early, maybe it won't be that busy. I, was, I just didn't know like if there was a lot of traffic, like rush hour traffic, I didn't know how that went. But I thought to myself, this will be perfect to go right now. Let's not waste time. Egypt is one of those places where, or Cairo, whatever the city is like you you already know what you what you what you're coming for what cut to the chase you know other places you might not be so familiar with what you're going to see or what you wanted to see but that's definitely a place where you know that's what you're going for so i said let me cut to the chase long story short went downstairs um, to ask someone hey can you help me get a cab and normally they would have went to the street and held, held the cab for me and then I, I went in but they called someone so the guy he called someone and and that's a red flag of course but not a big red flag it's a red flag in the sense that whoever they call they know which could be good but do know that he's gonna potentially get a kickback not that it's a big deal you know if, if you're in a poor situation, you're trying to help people and you're trying to help yourself, it's not a big deal. But so he calls the, at first we were trying to go negotiate price and it was, this was over the phone. He said the guy will charge $26, $27 per way. I mean, to go there. So I said, I went outside, I said, let me think about it. And then I'll try to hail a cab to see how much would it be. Like if somebody on the street will take me. And it seemed like most of the cabs just kept flying, like going really quick. And they were going, maybe they were going to the airport, who knows? And so I was like, you know what? If I can strike a deal with the guy to take me for $40 round trip, let's do it. I'm not gonna waste time, time is moving. I don't have a lot of time, let's get it. So when I went back in, he said, hey, you wanna do the, you wanna get a cab? And I'll, I'll, I'm gonna call my friend. And he said he'll do it for forty dollars. When I say forty dollars, he told me in Egyptian pounds, but it's forty dollars. The same forty I wanted to pay. That's what he said his guy would would uh, go for. So I said, "Cool, let's get it." So as I'm going there, uh, the taxi was really annoying me because he kept looking in the rearview mirror, like at me, very annoying, like the whole trip. But while we were driving he was saying this is this and that's that that building the president was around my area because there were so many guards for miles and miles like i saw them by the military building or whatever building it was uh, law enforcement guards they were like spaced out 
on each side of the street, on rooftops. Like it was, it was a big thing for miles and miles and miles. And he said, the president is around. I peeped this before he said it. He said, the president must be around because this is not normal to have so many guards. All right, long story short, we keep going. We could, the drive was about an hour, give or take. And um, so we were almost by the pyramids because you can see it from the distance. Even when you're on the highway, you can see it from far. And when you descend and, and go closer, he said, hey, do you, do you want to go to a museum? I didn't really want to go to the museum, but he told me they would explain to me certain things. So I'm like, cool, like, all right, whatever, let's go. So when I went inside, I'm like, in my head, this is not, no, this is not a museum. This is basically, if you want to call it a souvenir shop or art space, whatever the case may be, this is not what it is. And it kind of, it reminded me of when I went to Thailand years ago with my friend and we had tuk-tuk drivers, the gentlemen who ride the tuk-tuks and we paid, we went, it was so cheap. So my, my friend had one, I had one and uh, they kept stopping us at different businesses, businesses like um, suit shops or different other business, other businesses like that. And we kept getting so like annoyed, but when it was explained to us that um, they get fuel vouchers in return for bringing us to the business, we were cool with it because we're helping them out and they're only charging us $5 each and they're waiting for us. And it was, it was super cool. Once we were on the same page, we were cool. This guy brought me same thing. He probably gets a kickback and then that's it. Um, another thing, when he t after we left this place, we went to so, so like a we went to this business that had the guides that actually take you around, which is like outside of one of the gates. You can't miss the place; it's like by one of the gates. So he must get a kickback as well for bringing us to that business because if you leave it to like the local people, like what business are you gonna get? So that you know. I get it, everybody gotta eat, right? So as I get to the back, I mean, as I walk inside, they take me to a back, to the back. And they try to, they say, hey, while we're getting your guard, while, while we're getting your guide person together, um, do you wanna get, check out cologne and stuff like that? What kind of cologne you wear, this, that, and the other? They trying to sell me stuff. I'm like, I'm not interested. And I, I have to be very stern because I was already pissed about being in Turkey and them trying to sell me rugs, like going down uh, to somebody bringing me to their business, their souvenir shop and taking me directly downstairs, which I don't advise people, which is why I actually did it because I was trying to do a video on what not to do. Cause normally I would be like, no, like I have no problem saying no. I was trying to show people what not to do. And I have a video, a whole video about that coming up. So I was pissed off anyway about that situation. So I was very stern with them. So we were trying to figure out how much the tour was going to be. So for the tour that I was going to do, because there's different packages, I think he said like somewhere between 90 and 100 bucks. I worked it all the way down to 50. Had I had more change in my pocket, I would have worked it down even more, right? Um, because also during the conversation, he did tell me I still have to pay to get in, like the $12, they call it taxes, but that's, that's it's really the entry fee. He's talking about government taxes. Technically, that's the entry fee. And hindsight is 2020 because even I watched videos after I got back of there's a separate entrance. There's a real entrance where buses go and it has the, the listing of the, of the prices, like children and adults and everything. And it's about 12 bucks. So this so-called taxes is the entry fee to get in. The $50 I paid was for the horse and carriage. So I'm gonna end it right there with the story. That's what I was talking about. So what I would advise people, when you go, go to the main entrance where you see all the prices, pay that 12 bucks. The horse and carriage or the camel and this, that, is, is a very good option because if it's hot or you gotta go up the mountains, you can get tired pretty quick. So it'll be helpful to have that guide and they can tell you which pyramid is this, whatever questions you have to answer. But I will get that guy that's already on the other side of the wall. After you pay and you get in, get a guy there because uh, you can negotiate the price. Lastly, what I will say is 
once you negotiate a price that you're comfortable with and don't pay a lot um because t i could have i could have really paid like 15 bucks or 10 to 15 bucks for what i got you know um so what i would say is once you agree on your price pay the person right there because if they tell you that don't worry pay me afterwards they'll switch it up on you at the end uh, i saw a video where the guy wanted to pay the guy um the the horse the guide person he wanted to pay up front and then the guy said don't worry about it pay later and then the amount they agreed upon he said that was for him taking the pictures which they never discussed anything about you this price is for you to take pictures so there was a big argument this guy wound up paying like two to three times more than what they agreed upon just to get out of an argument and when you're in another country you have this feeling like you don't want to argue with the locals because if law enforcement get involved they're gonna fall on the side of the local person that's trying to bully uh, that that the tourist is trying to bully a local person so you always feel like in a, in a vulnerable position position because and and also you're not from there so you don't know what danger you can face so you kind of go go ahead with with that situation and so that's what i suggest to you guys so if you have further questions about egypt in terms of cairo and the pyramids leave it down in the comment section leave your question and i'll address it all right until next time david during no frontier over and i'll see you